All right, is this thing on? How's everyone doing today? It is a uh, Wednesday afternoon, middle of February. Hope everyone's well and warm. And uh, if you're in Texas today, I feel for you. Um, sorry about that, but uh, I think I checked the weather in Dallas. It's going to be like 63 next week, so you got that going for you anyway. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm your host, Chris Russell. I'm the uh, managing director of Rec Tech Media, where our mission is to inform the modern recruiter. And we do that through all kinds of stuff, uh, free stuff, podcasts, webinars like this, blog posts, news, and, uh, and the like. So today's event is the uh, Job Description Technology Expo, a little uh, thing I dreamed up uh, uh, over the winter break. And um, we're going to see uh, five demos today from different vendors who will help you uh, create and craft better job descriptions out there. So it is all about uh, making your jobs more appealing to, to job seekers out there, and that's why these tools exist. And we're going to run through those today. Uh, as a reminder, this event is always recorded and uh, will be available for replay basically right after the show, maybe about 10 minutes after the show, using the same link that you're on right now or that you're registered with. You can come back anytime on demand and watch that. You can also go to rectechlive.com or our page on Crowdcast where everything is hosted um, to see all the past shows as well. Um, let's see here. So we're also going to post individual videos for each of the vendors uh, after this on our YouTube channel. So you want, if you want to see those separately, you can do that uh, eventually. And I want to remind you about some upcoming events as well. Uh, I'm going to put these in the uh, uh, some links in the chat here. First up, the next event will be on March 17th. And that's going to be a, a demo of Rejobify. That's a project uh, product of uh, RegTech Media, uh, dreamed up by yours truly. And um, that basically is an email rejection service that will help you build your employer brand through better rejection emails that you send to your applicants. And that's going to take place on uh, March 17th. And then on March 30th, we're going to have another expo show. And that's going to be about assessment tools. So we've got a couple of vendors already selected there, uh, Resume Civ, um, uh, iMocha, to name a couple. And we're going to get a few more tools as well. Uh, and that's going to happen on March 30th. And here's the link for that. Let me throw that in the, uh, the chat. You know, with, with no um, uh, in-person events, I'm doing these kind of expos just to showcase what's out there for you all. Uh, since you can't go see them in person, that's kind of the idea around this. So rapid fire demos. Um, five or six vendors on each of these uh, webinars. We'll go for about 75 minutes today, roughly, I think, uh, hour and 15. And um, uh, we'll get all the uh, questions answered for you as well. Uh, let's do some shout outs. So I know, uh, let's see who's on the on the line today. Feel free to throw your name in the chat there. Uh, Amy B, Kelly McGregor, Donna Dietrich, Liz, Jamie, Rob Kelly's here. And Amit, he'll be our first presenter. Um, let's see here. Uh, let, let us know where you're dialing in from. I'm always curious to hear uh, where you guys are in the world. I know it uh, looks like Michael Bruce is here, Kirby, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper, the movie star, I hope. That's cool. Michael Yinger is here. Hey, Amit. Dave from Washington, D.C. All right. Holly from Minnesota. Marvin from uh, Seattle. Marvin, love your uh, eagle pictures from Facebook. Those are great. Uh, Bradley's from San Antonio, Texas. Okay, Bradley Cooper. Great name, by the way. Uh, Liz from New Jersey. Jamie from Minnesota. Amy from New Jersey. Mike from Charlotte. Mike Wagner from Detroit. Awesome. Mark Goldberg. Heather from North Carolina. Kelly Paul, my fellow C tier. How's it going, Kelly? Uh, Maury's here. Uh, Marie Dumay from Montreal. Excellent. Uh, Donna Dietrich, Sunny Warm, Arizona. Excellent. My dad's out in Mesa. He's always touting the temperatures. Uh, Carrie from Boise, Idaho. Awesome. Ryan from Minneapolis. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Katie from Tacoma. Mitch from Connecticut. All right, Mitch. Excellent. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, the format for today, uh, 10 five-minute demos, uh, rapid-fire succession, one at a time. Uh, if you have questions, put them in the chat or use the answer box down there. I'll, uh, I'll get to that um, once the uh, vendor is finished demoing. Um, the order of appearance. So we're going to hear from Clickify and Amit. We're going to hear from Job Page Grader number two, 
uh, before you apply. Nate will go over that. Number three, uh, Maury from Spark will go fourth, and then Rob from OnGag will go last overall. So, all right, here a few more shout outs: Tanya from Tampa, Trish from Williamsburg. Awesome, great to see you guys here today. All right, let's bring on Amit, and he's going to be our first presenter from ClickWify. Let me find Amit here in the uh, chat. <clears throat> All right, Amit, here comes your invites, and we'll get rolling here. <clears throat> Hey there, can you see me? Can yes, me? we can. How are you doing today, buddy? Good, how are you? All right, tell us where you're dialing in from. I'm dialing in from Philadelphia, or suburbs of Philly, rather. So Excellent, okay. Uh, quick 30 seconds, what is Clickify? For you? Yeah, um, hey, uh, thank you for for you for the audience here, as well as you, Chris, uh, for the opportunity. So Clickify was born out of a, a basic, basic need we had as recruiters, uh, me growing up in the recruiting space was how do you how do you really simplify the job spec into twitter like handles if you will right uh to really start to attract more diverse as well as more relevant talent so that the top of the recruiting funnel is, is higher quality than than it was excellent perfect uh great uh, definition there all right we'll share your screen let's see it and we'll get right into the yeah. points awesome uh let me just make sure all right share my screen here just uh, chris if you could kindly confirm that you can see it yep go ahead and uh, just click over to your tab there yep okay we good right. yep we're good all right okay great so um from a from a recruiting perspective uh having been in this space and leading this this space for the last 15 years or so around the world one of the challenges we had and my teams had at recruit as recruiters including myself was how do i quickly and easily brand my jobs without really the need to go to the marketing department every time and, and kind of have it in a self-service fashion. So the first thing we've done is uh, we've created this platform that does integrate with major ATSs um, based on the client's uh, requirements. But it, out of the box, it is available without any integration. So what I'm going to show you today is a non-integrated version of, of Clickify. So when, when the user signs up, it is a web app, so uh, it's subscription-based. When the user signs up, the first thing they create is a brand kit, which is the company logo, the brand colors really based off the hex code, any imagery that the stock images that their marketing department provides. Uh, we also offer an extensive library of royalty free images and custom brand fonts. And all in all, this ends up becoming the brand kit for the, uh, the user. In, in this case, it's the recruiter. Okay. Once that's done, uh, you're able to connect your, your major uh, handles from a social perspective. So Twitter, LinkedIn, and you can have multiple accounts. So you see here, I've got my personal LinkedIn as well as my company page, uh, company LinkedIn account, mm -hmm. and Facebook. Uh, we're soon adding Instagram into the mix here as well. Okay. Once that's done, the next step is now I'm ready to actually build my job ad. And it's a very simple, on average, it takes about four to six minutes for a recruiter on our platform to, to build these ads. A very simple uh, process. You provide the job details, create the job card, review it, personalize it, and publish it across the channels I just mentioned. So here, uh, let's say I've got a CFO job in Philly. Uh, just enter the detailed job spec, right? Uh, and we do know, by the way, we have research that shows that 81% of candidates actually don't read the job description before they're hitting their apply button. Uh, 81%? 81%. It's a pretty high number in the information overloaded world we live in today. And <laughs> it's only going to get worse, right? Um, and so majority of the people actually just look at the title and say, hey, you know what, That this looks like it's me. I'm going to just hit apply. And not knowing all the downstream issues that, that happen across uh, all the recruiters in terms of workloads and so on. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste the job description here. Again, it's a legal requirement in many parts of the world. Uh, so we do have machine learning built into our product as well. So that's the other reason we collect the detailed job spec to be able to actually decipher key skills and so on, which we'll talk about momentarily. Okay. So I'm going to click on uh, next here. So this is where, based on the brand kit elements that were chosen, it's a very controlled way. Uh, if we're looking consistency and feel, we've got about four templates here. We've got the fonts as well, and any custom font requirements that companies have. 
And you can, you know, essentially start with a blank sheet of paper here as well, right? So I can just have something like this. You can drag and drop things and so on. Now, the key thing that we worked with, uh, we actually worked with psychologists and, and a few recruiters as we're building this, is what do people remember? And I'm sorry, I'm just going to go back to the background here. And we'll, so what do people remember in this information overloaded world we live in? It's People remember things in threes and no more than 35 to 40 characters per line. And so that's how we've built the product to, to really have the biggest engagement or the highest level of engagement from a psychology perspective. It's kind of like a Google ad. Yeah, it's like Twitter slash Google. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly, right? So that's that's really what we're after is how do you drive relevancy so people can self-select out of the process early on, right? Um, so here, this is where the machine learning kind of kicks in. So the system is recognized. I've used the CFO job fairly regularly now. So it's saying, okay, you might want to think about board level engagement. Uh, it's not, look, it's not pretty yet. It's, you know, it's based on on uh, training the dog, if you, if you will, right? So over time, it's going to start to to learn the behavior, financial systems. Um, the third thing I absolutely probably want in this job is people leadership, right? And then this also helps the alignment, actually. So a lot of our clients right now love just the simplicity of this because it really drives the discussion between the recruiter and the hiring manager on what's absolutely required versus the nice to haves in a, in a detailed job description that exists today, okay? Uh, you have the the uh, key quals, right? I'm not a fan of years experience, but you know, of course, uh, some companies still use it. But uh, that's an MBA preferred. Um, I want maybe somebody who has SaaS growth experience, right? Um, and then perhaps somebody who knows SOX controls, right? From a CFO perspective. So really, I'm, I'm boiling it down to three to six key skills. Uh, again, uh, you know, it's more of an art than a science, if you will, and as it relates to what's truly required of the job, mm -hmm. and it creates better alignment up front with uh, with the hiring manager as well. Right. And then I can add imagery here. So you may remember we uploaded marketing provided imagery here. Uh, these are static images. Uh, in about three to six months, we have on our roadmap to include video capability here as well. So it could be a 10 to 15 second video on, on the job or and so on, right? Um, so here you can have the company specific uploads, but we also offer a royalty free library of imagery that recruiters can choose from. And we're categorizing it by job functions. So healthcare, huge right now, uh, diverse, you know, equity, diversity and inclusion, huge, right? Um, so you can start to send very specific messages to the talent pools out there for the same job by just building multiple cards, they just look differently for the same job. Okay, I'll save this design because uh, that's that, that was one of the, the key areas is you know how how often do I have to rebuild? And that's the other piece we've taken into account here is once you build this card, you can repost it as many times as you like as long as you have the same job. Right. right. Just gonna click next here. This is where, again, uh, we've got a character limit built into this. Uh, this is where you can have a more personable message of, to go along with this job ad uh, on social. Uh, so it could be the mission values. Uh, it could be just making the job more compelling. You know, what? why is it better for society? Wh whatever the recruiter feels is going to start to attract the right kind of candidates, right? Yeah. Something besides we're hiring, right? <laughs> right, right. And we're actually working on some leading questions here uh, that, that, that are going to be added in the next iteration to help allow that that thinking process around what, what is compelling to create, right, in terms of the personalized message. So for now, I'm just going to say hashtag women in finance, right? So I can also do hashtagging. I can tag folks here, here as well as then make sure that on the social channels that the tagging is, is has gone through or translated well, right? Uh, we do offer two options. Uh, we've got some some startups, uh, you know, who actually like the Clickify applicant flow. Uh, we're not an ATS. We're simply at the top of the funnel. Uh, and then some some larger clients, uh, you, you know, want to just drive the traffic to the job, the detailed job spec that's in the career site today in the ATS. Uh, so we offer both options for for our clients. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna click on save here. And next. When did so, Clickify start, by the way, Amit? Oh, uh, we launched about four months ago. Okay, um, so you're brand new. 
brand new, uh, but we're we've got about four global clients right now and about eight more in the pipeline around the world. So nice. Uh, this is uh, you know I've got clients in the U.S., U.K. We're tracking two in Singapore and three in Australia at the moment. Uh, and then the last step here is the recruiter is in com complete control over when and where they want to post the job. So they can do multiple cards, multiple campaigns, and publish it based on some of the analytics I'll share with you as well. Okay. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to hit publish here because this is a demo, but I hit publish here, and the way it would look is, is something like this. This is a live feed on LinkedIn, and the candidates would actually see a, a link that's embedded in the ad for that job that's got some virality built into that that uh, that job spec as well. And then the details are there for legal purposes and for the two, you know 19% of people who actually write, like reading the details. <laughs> right, so we have that there. As soon as, notice that we're not calling it an application. This is just simply top of the top of the funnel. So it's really about just the opportunity, notify recruiter, and as soon as that happens, uh, the candidate actually appears in the inbox for that particular job campaign right through Clickify, you know, including the resume and so on. Okay. Okay. And I think I've got like 30 seconds left. We do provide analytics as well. So for our enterprise clients, we provide recruiter activity around how all of the jobs are doing across the social channels, right, in totality, as well as we break it down by, by the various um, channels uh, that, uh, that the ads are posted in. So this way you can see what, what jobs work better in what social media channels, uh, as well as which recruiter is using you know, the, the, the product in its, in its entirety in terms of attracting uh, the, the, the relevant candidates to the jobs. Very cool. Well, your time's up a bit. We've got a couple, one question actually for you. Sure. Uh, so Marvin asks, uh, Gardner's research suggests that passive candidates are very interested in the job description as they're waiting for the dream job. Given your research, did you find a difference between the active and the passives in the 81% number you threw up? Yeah, Marvin, great great question. Um, so the 81% number actually came from just online behavior from a job description, from a content perspective, right? So uh, no way to decipher whether they're active or, or passive, Mar Marvin. Um, sorry about that. Gotcha. Awesome, we'll tell them where to go to learn more. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear what the question. Did you say tell, tell, tell the audience where yeah, to go? Yeah, yeah. You can learn learn more at Clickify.me. There's a demo there. Uh, you know, LinkedIn, uh, Clickify. I'm I've got Twitter handle HR for Life, as well. So, a uh, lot of ways to to reach us. Awesome. Well, feel free to put your link in the, in the uh, chat there, uh, Amit, and appreciate your time today. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Let's close him out, and we'll bring on uh, Jim from uh, Job Grader. Let's. There we go. Probably can see my browser. You got yes, it? We're good. All right. Great. Okay. So, yeah, so you can go to jobpagegrader.com. As I said, this is a completely free tool to use. There's a little bit of information on the page that showcases uh, what this tool does. Now, obviously, I had some demo pages, but I'll quickly uh, give you a, an example uh, of some jobs. One of them I was going to do was uh, Netflix's careers. Uh, let's go to their website. What we do is we take an, an, an actual job page, URL of one of their jobs. So let's take one of these. And then we paste in the URL of that job. Just add my email address in and hit let's find. Now what's doing is it's looking at a lot of things here. It's looking at up to 80 metrics. Um, it's looking at the quality of the contents. It's looking at under the hood in terms of the quality of the code. Um, it looks at things like accessibility. There's, um, I think there's around 10 different APIs we use from things like Google's Lighthouse, Microsoft Cognitive Services. We're using W3C accessibility tools to check the quality of this job description. Now, the time it takes to actually grade the job is dependent on the actual quality of the job. Interestingly, with Netflix, Netflix was a, a challenge when we were actually building this tool a couple of months ago, which when, when we launched it. Was obviously every single job page is coded in a, in a different, complete way in terms of the HTML code. So we had to make sure that we, we tested thousands and thousands of different brands and different jobs to be able to release it. To, you know, to be really confident with the tool. 
So what we've got here is we've got this actual job as being graded and we grade everything from a mobile perspective because that's what we we understand what Google wants. Everything is mobile first now. And what it does is it breaks down the overall score, which we've got as 60 right now, and it breaks it down into engagement, conversion, performance, and SEO. And what you can do is you scroll down the page, you can then break down the different elements of each of these sections. So as an example, from a sentiment point of view, it will give you some insights here. We've got some insights in terms of readability, practicality. So there's no real, like it doesn't understand that there's images on that page. And then we've got things like discrimination bias. So here we've got, we're using uh, lots of feminine words, which isn't so bad, but when it's obviously more masculine words, then it highlights it as an issue. Within conversion, they do have an application form on the page, which is great, but we've found some issues when it comes to uh, reading the actual job description in terms of the, the reading level. Um, there's obviously lots of different eyes, uh, APIs working out all of these metrics, but there's a lot of research that has gone into this as well. So the length of a job description is based on tons of research we've done as well. Then look at SEO. So where obviously Netflix have fallen down is what we call schema markup in, within the code of their job. Schema markup is basically telling Google what this page is. So Google doesn't understand it's a job. It doesn't understand what the title, where the title is, if it has a salary or anything. It doesn't understand all the attributes of the content. So what we have here is we're, we're basically scraping it and saying well, we don't have any of this information. So it's likely that this job won't appear on Google for jobs. We've got some metadata issues. We don't have uh, a meta description. We've actually got a canonical issue here, which means that Google could penalize them for duplicate content. Then we look at <clears throat> things like mobile, whether they're using accelerated mobile pages, if you're familiar with that. And then we uh, look at speed and the quality and the size of the page as well. Speed is a big thing at the moment with Google's new algorithm that's about to be released in May, which is all about page experience. So right now, this page is taking, let's take a look, where are we? We're taking um, 13 seconds. We're taking 20 seconds to interact. So the interact time is really the benchmark that you should be aiming for of when a candidate can begin to scroll and move around the actual job description. The benchmark with Google uh, for a great score is 3.8 seconds. Um, and then once you get past 7.8 seconds, then you're potentially losing 10% of your audience each time. So interactive means either scrolling or clicking on something? Yeah, so as a, a web page will start to load, like as in paint itself, just you know, start to load in the images, render JavaScript throughout that page. By the time the, the page is fully loaded and being able to interact with it, that's, that's what we're uh, saying here, that it takes 20 seconds to load. Um, what we also we have as part of this tool, so that's just one of the scores. Let me just pull up uh, another example. Um, here's a career site that we built. Well, that loads a pull up example as well. So here's uh, King, creators of the famous Candy Crush game. So we'll just grab one of their jobs, take the URL. What we can do is we can do a comparison, a side by side comparison. So it may be that you wish to look at um, your job versus another one of your jobs, or maybe compare one of your jobs to a competitor to see how it performs. So it's not just a case of looking at the one job, you can do a side by side comparison. Um, so you can see here that a, a website that we've built, you know, it, it scores 86. You can see the overlay here in terms of where we outperform versus Netflix's page. Um, so if we go through that little detail, it gives you a high level overview of, of those scores. So um, King, they don't have an application on the form on, on the actual page. Unfortunately, they take the candidates away. But we do have things like Google for jobs. It's all built for mobile. And the speed and the performance are, are hitting all of those key metrics that we, we want to make sure that we, uh, we're hitting. Um, so if I just take you back to the page in terms of what you can get from this. So as I say, there's lots of insights where we're trying to give you information about how you can improve by, say, for example, um, gender bias. You can remove particular words. I think with other types of adverts, you'll test it will give you um, insights in a number of areas. If you need any help with your job descriptions, you can obviously contact contact us to do that so we can help you with either job descriptions career sites um, crm with our partner beamery who we've built this with or seo or even google for jobs and then there's some great articles and tips and tricks um, that we uh, continually um, add to the bottom of this as well 
And that is a quick whistle stop tour. I'm really sorry that my browser decided to uh, not play ball. I had a few other examples, but hopefully that gives you um, a picture of, of what this tool does. Yeah, definitely. Jim, uh, what's uh, like, what are your sort of top two or three metrics on this report that you think are the most important for uh, the average recruiter to know about? Yeah, it's a great question. As I mentioned before, I think Google's algorithm that's going to come along, which is going to really hit a lot of websites in terms of performance is speed. So looking at the speed of a website takes the load. You know, if a, if a candidate is on a mobile device, look coming from Google, because that's where most searches come from, seven out of 10 searches start with Google. They hit your key landing page on your careers website. And that's the first time they've ever seen your, your brand, immerse them, they're beginning to hopefully immerse themselves in your employer brand. You know, if that experience takes too long, then they're just gonna go back to Google and go to one of your competitors. I think there's a lot of talk around diversity, equity, inclusion, you know, so like not discriminating against, um, you know, for candidates by saying the right things. You know, Netflix have got some great content, you know, I've, I've probably been a little bit harsh with them on their job description, but they've got great content when it comes to DEI. And, uh, and Google for jobs is just, it's, you know, it's simple, you know, to, e to add schema markup to a, a job page that can give you visibility on page one of Google. So they would be the key things I would look at, the quality of the content, getting your visibility on Google for jobs and looking at that page experience for a candidate. Most of them look like shopping lists, you know, uh, and it just said there before it's 81%. Um, I'm not going to read it. So make them more engaging. You know, if you look at what we've got with, with King as an example, we've got great imagery. We've even um, designed bullet lists to match the Candy Crush icons, and then we're immersing them in more content. You know, what's like to, to live and work in Barcelona, what's like to move to Spain, and what's like to work in teams and, and see other jobs as well, as well as hear employee stories too. So do everything you can to make your, um, your job descriptions, your job pages as engaging as possible to keep them there and hopefully to convert them, but make sure it's a great experience. Yeah. I like that King example. It's, it's a very readable page. You can quickly glance at it and get a, get a, get a sense of the job and the company uh, all in one shot there. So excellent tool, Jim. I love the, uh, the product and uh, I love what you guys are doing with that and uh, great great job on pushing that out there. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks. For all, right. all right. Job page creator. It's Jim. Thanks a lot, Jim. We'll uh, catch you on the rebound and uh, get you. Let's bring on Nate from Before You Apply. And I'm curious to see this tool as well. So Nate, you're up next. Just sent you the invite. And he's accepted and connected. All right. And I believe it's before you apply.com. There he is. Hey. All right. How's it going today, Nate? It's going well, man. Thanks for having oh, me. He's on the West Coast there. I am. Are you warm? Yes, I am. I'm actually kind of chilly right now, but I should not complain because <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I, I have it pretty good out here. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Just give them a quick overview of what Before You Apply is and then go right into the product. Yeah. So um, Before You Apply is what we wish existed the last time that we looked for work. Um, it's really an attempt to answer all the questions that we know candidates have at the top of the funnel before they apply um, to get recruiters better response rates to their outbound messages and really cut down on their screening call times. That's the biggest use case that we started with. And then we reverse engineered everything from there. Um, but I think some like other helpful context before I jump in is that before you apply was created out of job portraits. And for the last seven years, job portraits has been uh, one of the top employer branding content studios. Um, we're based out of the Bay area. And about a year ago, a couple of us at the company put our heads together and uh, came up with this new offering called Before You Apply. And it took off really fast um, to the point now where it's actually become kind of the face of the company. So um, it's we kind of reversed it where a lot of companies will start with a product and then build like custom services off of that. Um, we really rooted ourselves in custom services and then created a more productized version of our of our work from there. So a little bit, little bit different. Um, All right. Well, look forward to uh, checking it out here. So feel free to share your screen. Cool. And let's jump into the products. All right. So what we're looking at here uh, is what we call a before you apply team profile. Um, in short, what this is, is this is a profile based on the team level where we come in um, 
we interview members of a priority team at a company and we ask them really pointed questions to draw out all the information that we know candidates want before they apply. When they're looking for work, obviously candidates come in with questions on their mind. And what we want to do is really provide that for them up front um, to help make uh, recruiter efficiency um, just a real thing for companies. So like, as you can see, this is a, a mid-market sales profile. I keep trucking. Um, it has a light branding element to it. It has, um, you know, links to all like candidate facing uh, sites, social media, et cetera. Um, a little about section um, about the team and about the company. And then we get into like the core part of the profile, which is um, these Q and A videos uh, led by us. Um, and we ask just these like very pointed questions. None of these questions are designed to be layups. Um, and you can, as these I- These are like job seeker FAQs, right? Kind of like- uh, what Very much. Know. Yeah, um, and some background on that. Um, we've done a lot of research with candidates on the market, especially really hard to hire competitive talent like software engineers, um, you know, really skilled salespeople. And we've just asked them, what are all the things that you're looking for before you apply? Um, we took all of that research and just like, like I said, reverse engineered to create this page for them. Um, so as you can see, you know, it has a series of, most of the profiles end up with 10 to 15 individual video clips. Um, and then it has all of these, like um, these just like transparent pieces here. Like you can apply for the roles, obviously contact the recruiting team. This is very much like a marketing play. Um, candidates, especially if they come in this well-informed, will just have questions that, that they need answered and, giving them the ability to reach out to a recruiter directly um, has just been highly effective for our clients. And then this great links to learn more. We think of this as what do you wish showed up on Google if a candidate was researching your company? Um, and for a lot of companies, they might do a really great job at creating assets that just get buried. Um, whether they're lost in a Google Drive somewhere or they're just like not SEO friendly, um, this is the opportunity to put this front and center for a candidate. And in the research that we did when we were designing the page, what candidates were telling us is they would go into the videos as soon as they got the spirit of, of the company and of the team, they would go straight over to this area here and just go down a rabbit hole of research. Hmm. Um, and then team size and roles, collaborative practice, practices, how you're working, tech stack, you know, company level stats. These are all just like those little bits of information that just like float around in a candidate's head. Yep. Um, and what we don't want is we don't want recruiters just spinning their wheels on screening calls, just answering the same questions over and over and over again. And this is really an attempt to like help mitigate that um, and just make recruiters calls more productive, more thoughtful, so they can start getting to the information that, that they want to convey as fast as possible. Um, so, you know, there's a couple other other components here that are like really important to highlight. Um, when we come in and, and when we profile a team, um, we have a very structured process. Like we, we've done this a lot. Um, it's a very streamlined process. We do it in the form of a, of a production sprint. Um, so we, we turn around content very fast, uh, usually within two weeks or less. Um, we've also given all ownership of the content to our clients. Um, I think that it's very common in our industry to to create something and then license it back for companies to use however they want to. What we've decided to do is just create this with our clients and give them the ownership so they can use it however and wherever they want. Um, we also they, deliver- Can they edit whenever they want? Um, yes, they can. Uh, they, we would need to um, help them with that, creative pro with that part of the creative process, but absolutely, yes. Gotcha. Um, Another component too is that um, in addition to creating this finished uh, team profile, uh, we will also uh, we also give our clients a, f a folder with all of the individual video clips, which means that that in turn is 10 to 15 social posts that can just come out of creating this one page um, that can then all drive back to the page or drive to the career site wherever they want. Um, we also uh, um, we also assign a dedicated account manager a producer, a copywriter, and a video editor, along with an activation specialist on every project. 
who guides, you, you know, that is, that's the team working on production. Um, and at the end of it, we help with what we call a launch day where we come back together with, with the recruiting team and, and members of whatever team that we're profiling. And we take them through like a 45 minute to an hour work session to help with, uh, with distribution of the content to help amplify the message, um, which has been like really impactful as well. Um, and then, you know, there's like some other things too, like not every company is, is obviously created the same. Um, we know what questions that, that candidates want answered, but at the same time, companies might have special initiatives, things they're, they're proud of that they do, you know, that, that are unique or different and that they want to highlight. And so we also build in some flexibility here with the content where we can customize questions. Um, like let's say you're doing, uh, you know, a DEI initiative around like hiring women engineers or, 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 you know, something like that. We can build in some, um, some custom questions that really highlight those things that are important to the organization. Gotcha. Okay. Some questions on pricing and Nate, uh, what does it cost? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. So, um, we've actually rolled this out, um, for, for those that are in our network, um, as a freemium model, um, I'll be transparent why, um, but it's also like, a, it's a pretty cool and unique opportunity. Um, we will come in and we will profile any team as an experiment for free. Um, the reason we do that is because sometimes like creating this kind of content can get stuck either in budget conversations or sometimes even outside of the function, knowing what employer branding content looks like isn't really known. Um, and we know that if we can come in and like show, create something that's cool that is getting an impact, that there's the opportunity for us to, to grow internally at, a, at an organization and profile other teams. Um, but we're, we're happy to come in um, and, ha and have the conversation about rolling out one of these for free as a way to like create something really neat, run it as a low risk experiment for the organization, uh, create some, some immediate impact. And then from there, we can talk about rolling it out to additional teams. Um, so it's kind of a win-win, a but it's worked really well so far. Excellent. And it's before you apply.com. Yeah. And if yeah. anybody, I, I think probably the easiest way is just if you want to schedule a conversation with me just to talk through details and logistics and go over like the production process, just email me. It's Nate at before you apply.com. I'll throw that in the chat as well. Yeah. Throw in the chat there, Nate. Appreciate that. Cool. Awesome. Well, we appreciate your time today, Nate. Thanks for coming on the show to us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Let's bring on Maury from Spark. She is number four on the list. Rob Kelly from Mange, you're up next. So you're on deck. Maury's from sparkstart.com. There she is. Here I am. All right. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Excellent. You are in New York, correct? Absolutely, Manhattan, the center of the universe. All right. So give a quick 30-second uh, description of what Spark is first. Okay. Um, Spark is a video-powered job profile. It's meant to spark interest in candidates and differentiate jobs and get candidates to look more seriously at your specific openings. All right. Well, share your screen, Maury, and let's get, uh, let's get started here. Okay. Can you see my Spark logo? Yep, fire away. Great, great. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Bori Hannigan. I'm CEO of Spark Start. Um, and this is going to be a little uh, different introduction to um, our product, but hang with me. Eventually, you'll see where I'm going here. The couple things that have caught my interest lately that I just think are very cool that I thought I'd start off by sharing. Um, and one of them is the new Maserati. Have you guys seen this? This is an amazing car. It's got 11 boys surround sound speakers. It's got 10 different ways you can move and heat your your uh, seats. It, obviously, the power is incredible. It's just, it's an amazing car. It's got me really excited. Um, another thing I'm really excited about is this new lamb sauce I've discovered. Um, it's got some lemon juice. It's got some garlic in it. It's a wonderful, wonderful um, lamb sauce. Just terrific. Um, and the third, another thing that I'm really excited about right now is there's actually an opening at AMD um, for a global talent acquisition role. AMD is a very cool company, um, very interesting role, and something really encourage you to look at. Um, 
how many of you have rushed to your phone and are looking up to see more about these things? Have I interested any of you? Have I caught your attention? Um, and the answer I'm going to guess is no. Now, unfortunately, you can't see this, but this is how we advertise Maseratis, right? We don't use the window stickers. This is how we advertise lamb sauce. And unfortunately, this is how we advertise job descriptions. I started my career at Procter & Gamble in marketing, and we never used the usage instructions off the back of the box to advertise anything. And when you're in recruiting and you're looking to interest candidates in your jobs, you've got to do more than put a job description out there. We see a lot of people who are working really hard to rewrite their job descriptions and try to make their job descriptions more engaging. Um, and I want to say stop. Just stop. Unfortunately, candidates aren't reading them anyway. You heard the 81% number earlier. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this heat map of where candidates' eyes go in a job description. Um, anything that's red is only one to two seconds of them looking at it. Anything yellow is less than that. And what happens is candidates will read a job title. They'll read some subheads. Maybe they'll glance at a bullet point but they often apply or don't apply without really understanding the job. And that creates all sorts of problems for your efficiency in terms of attracting a well-educated candidate who knows about the job that's applying for all the right reasons. What we believe you should do, other than just try to keep rewriting your job description, is really enhance your job description. And that's what we've done with Spark. So this is a Spark. Sparks are job specific. They're always requisition specific. And they feature a video from the hiring manager. So the candidate gets to actually meet their boss. This isn't a random employee testimonial. This isn't somebody somewhere in the organization. If you took this job as a sourcing specialist, you would work for this guy in the video. And you'd get to hear from the hiring manager. You also have the option of, oh, there we go. Um, you also have the option of adding two coworker videos on the carousel so people can hear from the team. We also give things like top three reasons to apply, which are just um, bullet pointed and easy to read. There's infographics on travel and workspace. And let me see if, oops, well, we were gonna go through the rest of it. Um, travel and workspace, we do a very high level benefits. These are just infographics. There's no information behind it, but it tells the candidates what, what benefits are available. There is a job um, description here for those candidates who are interested in learning more and have started to learn about the job. There's a synopsis of the company. There's the ability to share on social media. There's an apply now button that goes directly into your ATS. So what we've done is taken the job description and really enhanced it with something that's much more visually interesting, something that's much more engaging, something that's much more targeted to the candidate, other than the generally fairly formal and not particularly engaging job descriptions you've got out there. So let me show you how some clients have used this. Um, Thermo Fisher, a really wonderful company. They had great traffic to their website, but they weren't getting the conversion of visitors to their websites to applicants. They put a spark on their job posting page. So someone who came to their, their job site, to their job posting page on their website, could actually meet their boss and meet the team. And they found the conversion of visitors to applicants went up by 60%. That's a huge difference. So all the energy and all the work you're doing to drive candidates to your career site, you can actually convert more of them to applicants. Um, Fidelity had a different issue. They had a program that had a six month training program where they actually put people into classroom for six months to teach them how to do the job the Fidelity way and then put them on the job. And what they found is they were getting an awful lot of applicants who had never read the job description, didn't understand that there was six months of classroom training. And when the recruiter got them on the initial phone screen, the candidate would bow out and say, ah, I'm not interested in more classroom. I don't want to go back. I'm not willing to just, you know, some of them were experienced people and weren't willing to give up revenue for six months while they went back to training. So when they did a spark and they had the hiring manager, in this case, the program manager, give a very short video about the program, candidates listened to the video, they understood there was six months of training, and if they weren't interested in that, they didn't apply. So the efficiency of the recruiters just skyrocketed. They didn't have the calls ending up with the candidates going, no, I'm not really interested, thanks, but that's not for me. So you had a much better educated candidate that actually got into the process and the entire process worked more efficiently. Um, another example, SSM Health. No one on the call is surprised to hear that nurses are in very short supply. 
Um, they created a spark and one of the nurses who was in the spark shared it on her personal Facebook page and she got 50 engagements and 27 shares. Just imagine that for a minute. Imagine you're recruiting nurses and you've got 27 nurses who are out there promoting your job to their entire social network. Free advertising. What? what? I didn't hear you, Chris. Free advertising. Yeah, free advertising. Absolutely. This is all native. It's absolutely amazing. And when you put employees into Sparks, they tend to share it on their social networks and they tend to be connected to other qualified people, right? Developers went to school with other developers. Recruiters go to conferences with other recruiters. We all know each other. Um, those are very, very rich places and you can get your job in front of those people without spending a lot of money. So recording the videos is really easy. You don't need to download any app. Um, the recruiter creates a spark and puts the email address of the hiring manager in it. The hiring manager gets an email with a link. They just click on the link. It opens the camera on their phone, their webcam, their tablet, whatever they're using. We don't care what the hardware or software is. They get some prompts to record the video. When they're done, they hit a submit button and the video automatically uploads to the spark start system where it's hidden behind a firewall until someone at the company approves it. So every video is approved, but that's a really fast and easy system. We've got an approver dashboard. You can go through these. We recommend that the videos are only 20 seconds. You're just trying to spark interest. You're not trying to explain the entire job. You just want to get that candidate to take the next step to actually apply or respond to a recruiter. So sparks are easy to make. We can integrate them with your ATS. Um, you can measure the results. You can measure the opens. You can measure the um, number of applies. You can measure the number of people who opt to join your talent community, and they're very affordable. And if you want more information, that's me. I'm Maury at Sparkstart. Excellent. Perfect timing, Maury. A couple questions for you. Okay. Um, Sylvia asks, uh, please share the source of the candidate survey of the candidate survey yes um which candidate survey maybe she's talking about somebody else sylvia just uh, kind of clarify that who, who you're uh, we do a lot of research um mm, mm, yes sorry just need more information on that uh, one. the ats stuff you indicate with uh, just give me some examples of some of the current ats you're working with today for example um, anyone, we're working with uh, Talent Brew on, on the job posting page. We're, we're Talent Brew, we're Smashfly, um, Career Builder, Phenom People, any of them. If you want a Spark to appear on your job posting page, we give you three lines of jQuery um, that you just drop onto your, um, you do it one time, you drop it onto your instance of your um, job posting page, and it's all matched up with the requisition numbers. So if you have a Spark for the job, it automatically appears there. If you don't have a Spark for a job, it doesn't appear at all. So it's all done behind the scenes. Excellent. Um, let's see here. Do you know how long like uh, the average job seeker looks at one of your pages in terms of just uh, like the engagement of it? A great, great question. Now we've measured that. And people spend at least twice as long looking at a Spark as they do a text-only job description. The job description averages about 60 seconds um, and a Spark averages about 130 seconds. Um, and, and some of it is people watch the videos, they, they read the little top three reasons to apply their bullet pointed or tend to go to bullet points. Um, and they learn more about the job, so they're better educated. Excellent. Uh, cool. Well, Maury, uh, uh, thanks again for your time today. Appreciate you uh, coming in and showing us Spark, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Great. You too. Thanks, Chris. All right. So Rob Kelly from Iron Gig is up next. Let me uh, dial him up here. Here he is. Okay, Rob, sending you an invite. His company is OnGig.com. And he's based out on the West Coast as well, I think. No, I forget where he is, actually. Hey, Rob. Hey, hey there, Chris. All right. Welcome back. We spoke yesterday briefly. Yeah. Thanks again for uh, inviting all of us. Excellent. So uh, give the audience a quick 30-second description of what on gig is first. Sure thing. So if you're a growing company, your recruiters and hiring managers are spending a ton of time either writing or copying and pasting. Uh, their job descriptions. And most end up being boring. Um, some are even biased, excluding candidates who may be the best candidates um, from even applying. So not only might you be embarrassed by your job descriptions, you're losing out on the best candidates too. 
but you can't expect your team, recruiters, hiring managers, TA team, anyone to be copywriters. You're not an ad agency. Uh, maybe if you are, you're lucky enough to borrow a copywriter. I'm pretty sure most of you um, are not ad agencies. So um, your hiring team needs some help. They need some JD writing help. And think of OnGig as a spell checker for boring and biased words in your job descriptions. And today I wanted to um, show it to you live in action. All right. Well, let's see this thing. Go ahead and share your screen. All right. And uh, we'll get rolling here. Yeah, give me the prompt where to share. I just no, mouse no. over your photo and you'll see your uh, icons there. There you go. Thank yep. you for the reminder. It's only my second time using Crowdcast IO. <laughs> Seems like a nice, uh, a nice app. Yeah, I like it. Uh, you know, versus a Zoom where people can follow you and get notified, and they can easily yeah. connect with them. So it's it's a great platform for that. How's it looking? Can you see it? Yes, sir. Great. So let's look at Tesla. So we're in we're in the OnGig app right now, and we're looking at a Tesla job description. And this is not to pick on uh, Tesla. They they do a lot right here, um, but I thought it'd be a great example and show you how things uh, work and some, some of the areas of value. Notice everything as you're watching this, everything is live, real time. The scores are gonna be changing. Um, I think you'll notice as we dive in. So the first thing we're looking at a global supply manager, fasteners, and you'll notice that we flag certain amounts of words. Down here, we're flagging masculine words, we're flagging feminine words and some other things. You'll also notice there's a total score. All these scores will be changing as you watch them. So let's go look at a couple of these flagged words. When you get a flagged word underlined here, objectives, um, our data shows here that this is a word that attracts men more than women. So instead of, um, instead of using that word, you've got synonyms to swap right in, priorities, targets, goals. These are words that attract uh, women more than men if you want to tilt the scales and attract more female candidates. Your scores go up accordingly. Same thing with competitive. Um, women respond better to terms like attractive, fair, results-oriented, enthusiastic. By the way, this is not meant to say that women aren't competitive, but as a cohort and marketing-wise, which is what OnGig software is, marketing software for recruiters and TA teams, we're telling you our data is showing that women will respond better to results oriented and um, fair and attractive and so forth. And your scores uh, improve here. You'll also notice down that's a little bit on gender bias. Uh, if your goal is to attract more women, that was uh, that might be useful for you. You notice you can click on any of these words here on the right, by the way, and it goes right over to the actual uh, term. So in this case, the term is he, uh, he she. Sounds uh, fine enough. In the early days when I was growing up, it was kind of a he world, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, it moved to he, she, which sounds fine. Um, but unfortunately, the majority right now of uh, millennials and, and the new generations of candidates actually consider um, most people on a spectrum. And so even he, she language now uh, needs to be replaced if you want to be inclusive uh, to Gen Z millennials and the, the hottest new candidates. So we recommend they, you, by the way, first person is usually better anyway. It was like using, you uh, as the first person when you're talking to a, a job yep, center. Like that. Exactly. Make it more conversational. That's, um, that's sort of uh, copywriting 101, advertising 101 is to use that, but most, most um, employers make the mistake of using third party language uh, instead. So let's go look at another example here, another job description. These are all from Tesla. We just grabbed them from the career site. Airbag design engineer, sounds like a fun job. So in this case, we're flagging the phrase recent graduate. This is a little more nuanced. So in this case, you'll notice the explainer here. Um, say if you use this phrase uh, mentioning a recent degree or graduate, make sure you're not doing so in the context of excluding older people, okay? And if you use this language, you might get in trouble with age discrimination laws. Google's been sued a number of times for this exact uh, problem. Mm -hmm. So even more nuanced to help be inclusive, of course, to anyone of any age, but also keep you out of lawsuits. Last I checked, most of us want to uh, keep out of the courts. 
Let's go look at another example here, which is physical disability language. Now, Tesla's doing a better, better than average job um, here in their physical disability language. Of course, they're trying to um, comply with, uh, with the Disabilities Act and, and laws. But even on these, where they did a pretty good job, they're putting in the lift 50 pounds and all of that. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know this, but when you hover over this, you'll get the logic again here, which is that if you are putting in this, um, these requirements, you want to call them essential requirements and skills as opposed to just physical demands in work environment. That's okay, but it can be even better. So again, in this case, we're, we're keeping you out of uh, trouble and, and a lawsuit. So what's the replacement phrase then? You said it should be essential and um, essential requirements and lawsuits have been uh, won or lost based on literally just the, the word essential or not. So mm -hmm. that's to be EEO compliant. Let's hop over to look at this example here. All right, let me just reload this page. All right, we're gonna go look at this next. So as well, you'll notice that beyond the bias, there's a couple other tabs here, word choice and readability. So a couple things to flag here. We flag any words that are unnecessarily complex. So see all these, the ideal candidate, individual, sufficient, additional, they all sound fine. Most of your candidates would know what these words mean, but we call them unnecessarily complex. If you go to the ideal candidate, again, to Chris's point, notice we say you might wanna use you instead. Well, why is that important? Okay, it saves two words, that's pretty good. Um, but also, I'm not sure how many of you know this, um, know much about neurodiversity, which includes um, anyone with a slight learning disability, folks on the spectrum of autism. It turns out, for instance, Bill Gates has dyslexia. Very hard for him to read, even though he's an avid reader. I've, I've met him a couple times and I know this firsthand. He and anyone with um, even slight dyslexia have a problem reading multiple syllable words. They'll get through them, it just takes them longer. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure most of you would like a young Bill Gates, I sure would as, as uh, our head of IT mm -hmm. <laughs> or a developer. And so we end up giving you uh, replacement words to make it much punchier content. One client called it like having a mini Don Draper on your shoulder from Mad Men. Mm -hmm. You know, to help you again be, you can't be a copywriter, but we've got software to help you do that. You'll also notice down here, we'll tell you if you're in the danger zone for being too long on your job description. So we've got data that shows uh, when a candidate finds it too long and they're okay here. You see, they're just in the yellow, everything's in the red, yellow, green. So kind seven of um, words there looks like. So yep, yep. So they're okay, down. but many, I, I, you know, and Tesla was actually outstanding in this um, area. Um, nine out of 10 employers uh, have many job descriptions that are way too long. Some have ones that are too short. If you're doing it at scale, we often find job descriptions with either 100 words in them or 2000 words, same company. And that's usually an aha moment for the TA leaders. That's a large enterprise, uh, of course. And let's now look at, let's look at titles for a second. Okay. So you'll also notice I just did that live just to show you how it works. Let's say you're looking to use the optimal title and start from scratch writing a job description. Mm -hmm. Just look over on the right hand column here as I finish up writing this desktop support technician. We then go right out to our proprietary database of what candidates are Googling on this related sort of job title. And we then feed you that logic. So we're saying instead of desktop support technician, just an FYI, you might wanna know that computer support specialist, help desk technician, and these other two get this percentage more Google searches than the one you're That's about to feature. use. I like that. What's that? That's a great feature, I love that. Yeah, thank you. And again, we're giving you the logic, trying to be your guide. You may have reasons not that you can't change the title, 
but we're feeding you some leverage in case oftentimes our clients are saying, oh, thank gosh, I, I always wanted to call this person a help desk technician instead. We now are giving you the data to make that um, argument. Same thing, by the way, for simple things like software developer. Well, sounds like a fine enough um, title. Software engineer and web developer are currently getting 58% and 84% more searches on Google. This not only helps you on your career site with your job description, but it helps you on LinkedIn, Indeed, um, Google, of course, and anywhere else because um, it correlates. It's uh, comparable data. Uh, quick question, uh, uh, Rob. Uh, is it available in multiple languages? English only. English only. Currently. Yep. Okay. And um, there's a question from Mandy. I'm not sure if it's for you, Rob, or one of the other uh, presenters, but um, do you focus on job descriptions or does uh, your tool work with creating campaigns or with recruiting tools like LinkedIn Recruiter? Yeah, great question. We do it in the skin of a job description, but everything we just showed you, including, I guess, the easiest way to look at it is this blank slate that we were just typing into. Everything here, um, I'll just show you an interesting one. Let's say you had a requirement, um, uh, or this is just useful to anything. Let's say someone's going to run a lunch and learn session, and you're going to type this in an email. Uh, run a lunch run a brown bag teaching session, training session. You can use this in email. You can use this on something you're about to do on your in-mail. Notice that it had a flag, by the way. Mm -hmm. Turns out, you know, of course, this is unconscious bias. Uh, turns out that the brown paper bag test was a way to measure the color of one's skin decades ago and is still a sensitive topic to many people of color. Hmm. So answer your question, yes, you can use this for anything. We do it in the skin of a job description, but it's unlimited usage. So you can do it for, put your emails in here, put your put a resume in here, you name it. Excellent. Well, what's the pricing of something like this, Jim, hey, Rob? Yeah, the pricing ranges from about 11K per year US on up to the six figures per year US flat rate unlimited users, and the uh, variable is the size of your company. We have tiers of companies from SMBs on up to large enterprises. Excellent. Anything else you want to uh, end up with here? Yeah, the final thing is um, you get a dashboard look at all this, So, um, and this relates to what I was about to offer. Um, thanks again to you, Chris, and RecTech, anyone as part of your community. Um, so they can get a little sense of this. We give you this dashboard scoring and we flag these potentially exclusionary words in one place. Happy to just as a thank you back for having uh, us today, Chris. Um, anyone who wants to go to ongig.com, uh, O-N-G-I-G.com and request a demo, um, just put, uh, you know, we'll see it if you do it today and we'll give you a free analysis of your jobs, just like we did for Tesla here, okay. uh, for a handful of your jobs, not, not all of them. We did just a dozen or 15, it looks like, for Tesla. We're happy to do that um, just for you guys attending today. Excellent, and what are those instructions again, just to uh, reiterate? Just go to ongig.com and click the request a demo, any of the big buttons we put out there to uh, get you great folks to uh, engage with us when you're ready and, um, and you can also, you know, mention that uh, rec tech, but you don't have to. We'll uh, we'll watch in closely. Excellent. Well, I appreciate it. Love the tool. Love the what you're doing there uh, around the the wording. Um, really helps to, uh, you know, uh, refine the postings this way, and um, and really know what you're doing here and tracking that uh, next gen job secure, right? Thanks, Chris. Any other questions uh, you want to relay or that folks had? That's it, man. So we're good to go.